Andy, welcome to the show. Thank you for making time for this. Uh, I know you're about to head out the door to go on tour, so I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me, Finn. Well, I, I wanted. To, there's a lot of things I want to talk about with you, but let's start with uh, with your tweet. I will read it for everyone. You tweeted this, I don't know, last week or something like that. Yeah. Uh, being in a band feels pretty stupid now. The culture is embarrassing and nothing about it is cool anymore. Make almost no money and half my old heroes are disgraced perverts. I have worked my whole life for this and all I feel is ashamed, broken down and obsolete, barely hanging on. And then you followed up. I'll be fine. I still appreciate everyone who supports. I'll keep making music. It is what it is. There's a lot to unpack here that I want to ask you about, but just what, what was stuff, going through man. your head? <laughs> um, well, a lot of doom and despair. Uh, it, it was definitely a moment of, of weakness um, and the cynical talk. Or was it thoughts. a moment of reality? Well, it's a, it, it's a little bit of both. I, I think I want, I want to address that while I do have times where I feel this way um, wholeheartedly, I don't. It's not that all I feel is is ashamed and broken down and obsolete, but there are moments where that is the overwhelming feeling. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of times I I tend to vent and be like, should I should I post this? Is this something that can be mis misconstrued? Uh, and, you know, it gets the better of me. Um, but I also do think it's something important to talk about and uh, to keep this toxic positivity where everything's fine and uh, there's there's nothing wrong that needs to be addressed. Uh, that's not the way either. So mm -hmm. hopefully, if anything, um, for the people who don't understand where I'm coming from, we can meet in the middle and um, help give each other perspective from both sides. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, I don't want this to be like super negative or anything like that. Um, but like you said, I do want to talk about this stuff because I think it's important for people to hear, you know, reality in, in a lot of different ways. Um, not to say that everything is terrible and awful and all that, cause, cause that's not true. I mean, you're about to go on tour and play to, you know, thousands and thousands of people over the course of this tour who are going to, you know, tell you how great you are and love your music and all that stuff. And that's pretty cool. It's amazing. Yeah, it really is. And again, super grateful, uh, to be able to perform and, um, the reason why I got into music is not so it could feel cool to try to pursue being a rock star, but uh, because it's my favorite outlet and is good for my soul, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but when you spend so much time, especially in your your younger years, uh, looking up to an example that ends up uh, being kind of tainted or not at all what you thought it, it was going to be, and, and that feels like a piece of you. Um, it feels yeah. like a piece of you has been tainted in a way. You know what I mean? Because um, you've been influenced. For example, for me, um, Warp Tour. I grew up going to Warp Tour, uh, and that was all I ever wanted to do was be a part of it. And then, after a while, all these stories come out of of the abuse that happens uh, during Warp Tour. It ha happened during Warp Tour, um, and just a lot of other bad shit that I don't know. In retrospect, it, it makes you feel kind of kind of dirty for uh sure. idolizing the culture so much not not really understanding um although to, to be fair as a kid you know you there's no way you would know about that stuff you know until it course. comes out in the press and of course then you know you react you know nobody wants to see that stuff but it does kind of make you feel like man this thing that i loved was it ever what i thought it was yeah that that's a really good way to put it into words um and it does kind of break your heart a little bit. And also there's a certain level of, uh, I don't want to say being jaded, but the experience you get from doing this for 10 plus years, being on the road and um, musicians are often treated like they're at the bottom of the barrel and uh, you, you get screwed over pretty hard for a really long time. And um, you know, when, when you're 18, when you're 20, all all for me, all I wanted to do was be on the stage. I didn't care about the money uh, or really much, much else. I just wanted to be up there. But then when you're 30, it's like, OK, I've done these things that um, I, I've always really wanted to do. And a uh, 16 year old Andy's incredibly stoked and that's great. But you do need more. You you need to be able to make a sustainable living and, um, you know, keep nourishing your soul and feel good about the work you're doing. And, uh, 
you know, because of how difficult things are out there on tour, you hear about uh, venue merch cuts all the time and the crazy expenses that go into it. Just living in a fucking van for six or eight weeks. Yeah. It's rough. It is rough. And it it gets harder as the years go by. Um, The first tour, it's like, this is amazing. I'm on a tour with my friends. This is cool. It's like summer vacation. You know, and, yeah. and obviously it's an amazing opportunity to get out there and be on the road and stuff. But at the same yeah. time, you're literally living in a van with five or six other people, you know, not making a ton of money in most cases. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it's not easy. Right. And and when the money is not there and when your quality of life is suffering because you can't afford to, for instance, eat healthy on tour or get the amenities you need just just basic stuff like showering and really quick before we go any further have you checked out my patreon patrons get early access to all my main channel videos and my podcasts i also do giveaways sometimes for example i just gave away a pair of these eargasm earplugs and if you want me to review your music there's a way to do that as well all you got to do is join at the ten dollar and up level then every month i do a call for submissions if you want me to review something all you got to do is drop it in the comments of that post then i will review it live on twitch and post it on patreon for everyone to see so if that sounds cool hit the link in the description of this video and i appreciate your support and then you see everything that's going on in the climate currently and you're like well i'm a part of this and this is (laughs) this is what i chose to do with my life uh it's hard to wrap your mind around it and and i I want to talk about the the disgraced perverts part in particular, because I've thought about this a lot. Yeah. Um, here, I'll tell you my opinion and my experience. You can see what you tell me what you think. There are and it only becomes more and more obvious over the years. There are so many just dysfunctional shit bags in the entertainment industry, not just limited to music. It's like Absolutely. Hollywood, yeah. like Epstein and you know, um, uh, 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 Weinstein and just all these people like, you know, they're and Dan Schneider from Nickelodeon. Oof. I mean, like you, you realize that there are these people in Hollywood who were getting away with this stuff for, you know, decades because people were scared to say anything. And I think the same thing kind of happens to, I hope a lesser extent in music meaning that like there's a lot of people out there that everyone sort of knows are not great people right well kept Um, secrets yeah yeah or even it's sometimes it's not even a secret you know um but yeah lots of times it's a secret the fans may not know but people in the industry sort of know like this person's a shit bag but what are you gonna do you get booked on a festival with that person and you see them you know, backstage or whatever, Yeah. you know, wh- what are you going to do? You're not going to like, you can't confront them. Are you going to like, and so you're, you're in a really shitty position of like, okay, I'm playing a festival with this person. That's a piece of shit. And I don't feel good about saying yes to that. But on the other hand, like, yeah, you could be like, well, monuments isn't playing this festival and they're going to be like, okay, cool. We don't give a fuck. Right. Many more. So what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? Because, well, there's so many, so many small variables here too. First of all, um, there's varying degrees of being a shit bag. Yep. And some people are shit bags or whatever. And then some people have shit bag moments. Okay. No one's perfect. We all have some yep. shit. So I, I just want to express There's a difference between that. being an asshole and being an abuser. Right. Right. Uh, uh, there's criminal behavior. And then there's, yeah. you know, that guy's being a prick. Um, and and I, I understand that. And I also understand that there's two sides of stories and you can't always believe what you read on the Internet. So you can't just roll yep. up to a venue and be like, I heard something about you. Fuck you. Um, et cetera, but you do et wonder in those situations. You're like, of course, well, I don't know. It, is, is it like maybe it's true? Maybe it's not. And so you're in this situation of you have to like sort of just sh- I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but like it feels like you just sort of have to shrug and be like. Well, yeah. I guess it just is what it is. We're just going to play our set. And-, and and then what happens is your morality comes into question uh, yeah. for yourself and for the public. And, and people are constantly having to weigh their options. Is this tour opportunity worth the damage it's going to do to my reputation or the damage it's going to do to my own morals? Um, and I understand that, too. And I also want to say that my tweet and when I speak about stuff like this on Twitter, I'm not... Uh, doing 
a a public service. Okay, I'm I'm getting stuff off my chest. You know, I'm not I'm not a like a noble uh, messenger yeah. or anything. You know what I mean? Like I do think it does need to be talked about. Um, but very much that was just me putting out my feelings, and I do want people to know how hard it can be uh, faced with these like you like we were talking about these moral dilemmas and and, and, and it's still... true for the fans too it's like okay so we're yeah, gonna, yeah. i want to go to this festival because five of these bands i like are playing and there's this one guy in this one band who is a piece of shit do i go to support the bands i like or not go because this guy's a piece of shit it's like it's un it's unclear and i the thing that to me is unfortunate is just that there's so many of these people in music and people, I mean, entertainment in general, and that people just sort of tolerate it because the reality is that a lot of these people are extremely fucking talented and they have an audience yeah. and, and, and everyone is like, well, if, if we want this thing to be financially viable, I, I guess we have to tolerate this person. And I don't know if that's true or not, but I mean, that's the way people well, look at it. The, I think um, overall, if you look at the sum of these situations in society, talent usually trumps morals yep. um, and money. Money usually trumps morals in the grand scheme of things. And there are varying degrees to that. And some people will take a stand and some companies will put their foot down. But a lot yep. of times it's it's if you're already in a position where you can do that and still your career will be OK. Um and I don't know, I, to be honest, I've never really been faced with uh, a big one like that where it's like, should I do this or should I not do this based on this person's reputation? You know, I, I have had moments where I've said no to stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know how. But how, it's a lot of little things, you know, a lot like, of little things. Yeah, a lot of little things. We are like, man, I don't, I don't love being on tour with this guy because I don't right. really like the way he conducts himself. Yeah. And, but, and if you, sorry, go ahead, Finn. No, no. But it's like, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, what, yeah. You know? And if you already uh, have difficulty touring in the first place too, if, if um, it's just a really hard industry, man. And, and, and some people like myself, I, I struggle on tour a lot. Um, I know that each each time it's going to be a battle for just trying to stay healthy and get sleep and and maintain good uh, vocal health or or what have you. Um, and then you have all this stuff that's that's going on, or or it, are you going to tour with so many people that you don't uh, see eye to eye with morally or otherwise? Um, it makes you think a lot. It put it casts a lot of doubt. Uh, there's certainly something to be said about the the guitar hero and the the mm -hmm. rock star not really existing anymore, and um, you know sometimes I guess what, what do you I mean by like, that? Well, there's no uh, new Green Day or new My right. Chemical Romance coming into. Excuse to, me, have you heard of someone named Machine Gun Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Which is you know obviously still very much yeah. in the realm of of the pop world, and. A lot of times, I guess, I feel like I, I trained for a, a job or a position or a pipe dream that doesn't exist like anymore. Like being an elevator operator or making, yeah, like, yeah. You, know, horse, you know, horseback carriages or whatever. Right. Horse-drawn carriages. And and that doesn't, I want to be clear that that doesn't take away my love for the art at all. Um, But it takes a lot of the, the camaraderie and the solidarity and the understanding um, between not just your your peers in the musical world, but peers outside of the musical world, a way that you know it it's kind of a become a foreign thing uh, to to go out and and do this as a rock band. I I talk to a lot of people um, who are my friends who aren't in the industry, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, how much money did you make in that show?" Or uh, oh, you think like, we make money? Yeah, it was like, "Hey, can you take me?" backstage like to the the crazy backstage here and it's a lot of times like man i'm i'm playing these uh these dives and yeah um i want to see seven nerds back here on their phones right right and <laughs> and i'm always going to be very very proud of the the music 
that I've created and get to create and continue to to create and the awesome people that I get to work with and um, the art that I have to show for it. But at the same time, um, royalties being paid have never been lower. And we're all, most of us are in these, these record deals where we really aren't making anything even after we recoup uh, from the the loan from the label it's still a very small sum that has to be split between five people and a lot right. of times that's it's just going back into the tours it's going back into the records um we we are just using that to try to continue to work basically and and um bills are our thing man you know i i got to pay rent we we all got to pay our bills and and stay financially healthy enough to to survive do you and to wonder, keep doing this. Like, do you think about what you're going to be doing in 20 years? Because, you know, you're young enough now that it's mm-hmm. like, well, you can still kind of, you know, you can put up with some things, but like, yeah, I don't know, well, retirement, you know, stuff like that. The thing is about that, I do worry for my future. I, I know that that uh, musicians and entertainers, it can be very fleeting, your career. Um, but the other thing is when I was 20, I didn't, I couldn't possibly imagine how the world was going to be now. So I can't really imagine how it's going to be in the next 10 or 20 years. And I try not to worry about it too much for that reason. Yeah. Um, right. And we're always adapting. I mean, you are a great adapter um, t- to the time, still being able to make a career and uh, make your art in, in the changing musical climate. And that's what it takes it yeah. definitely does, but I still think that I'm allowed to uh, mourn the loss of uh, the the job that I was training for, essentially, sure. or or at least struggle to wrap my head around this new world. Um, but there is a, there's another side to that coin, you know. I have been able to do and see things that 99 percent of people would never be able to do or see and that's all because of music um you know there are priceless experiences that mm-hmm. that do make this worth it on a regular basis but then there I mean, are you're about times... to go get on a plane to europe and tour get paid to like travel around europe and meet people yeah that's pretty cool <laughs> well full transparency um this will be one of the tours where we will hopefully break even on <laughs> all um, right well i mean even if you break even on it you get there's to, you're no way there i would ever weeks. i would never be able to afford a, to, to travel like this without music so yes very much a privilege um but there, then there's a lot of stuff that that the people don't talk about which is just trying to maintain a, a five-way plus relationship um for months at a time uh having no access to to clean laundry half the time or showers uh or food, especially after a show when you have no crew, uh, because you can't afford crew, you've got to do it all yourself. And then and there's no, one a.m. and there's nothing open to eat. Um, and uh, you know the the merch cuts, and there's uh times where the guarantees are are too low for you to cover costs for that day, or uh, you're doing a routing show where it's kind of a B market. It's not an A market. So necessarily the turnout won't be super great, but at least you're making some money just to keep going. Um, and then you get sick and then you don't sleep. And uh, I I feel like even now I'm not doing a great job of describing how difficult it can be. Um, and I, that- I, I get like destroyed by traveling for work for like three days yeah <laughs> you know, honestly man now, me too it, it it breaks you down uh after a while and um even though hey man i i love making music like so much it it's literally who i am and in my soul the uh traveling like that on the seat of your pants being very insecure with your surroundings um not being in a place where where all of your preferences are and your stuff is that that's the stuff that's really hard for me. Um, yeah, I my routine is super important to me. Yeah. And if it yeah. gets thrown off at all, even at home, like it stresses me out. And on the road, it's like 
throw all that out the window. It's like you do whatever you can do in the moment and make the most of it. And just that's the best you can do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are a lot better at that than others, too. Some people are a lot yeah. better at the the drifter lifestyle. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's really what it is. <laughs> it is. You're a fucking professional drifter. Yeah. You just get to go on stage and play guitar for half it's, an hour every it's night. It's true, man. And um, in some ways, that's the most amazing thing ever. Uh, but it certainly doesn't give you a lot of security and, and solid ground to stand on a lot of the time. And um, yeah, some some nights are just really hard. And rationalizing doing this indefinitely as I enter my, you know, my 30s and, and beyond, it's scary. And and I wonder how is how long is this sustainable and, and how long can, can I keep this up and what 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 would I be doing if I can't? What because, right. you know, this is I put it all into this and and Well you're a good communicator. <laughs> you know, you, know I mean? you could have any other like white collar office job if you wanted to. I could. And and here's and that's that's the where my privilege is coming in because I don't want to do that. I I still want to be able to make music and yeah. and and make that. But you that could, and there's some and... people who just there's some people who can't. You know, what yeah. I mean? some people in music right. that it's like th- this is your only like you're at home in this world and anywhere else you're just not going to flourish. I um I don't mean to be grim, but like I don't even see I don't see a life without doing this. Um, I can't imagine a job that I, that I would prefer doing to uh, creating and performing. And I think I'd probably always be wondering what could, what could be if I did give it up. And, you know, it's funny that tweet that I made, it did also a lot of friends who were like, they used to do this. They, they would be like, yep, this is why I got out of it, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I, I've seen that a lot. And I, I really do hope that um, these people are hap- happier out out of the industry if if it was just that sort of thing was too much for them um but i want to make the the distinction that that it is still worth it in many ways and just because there are things to complain about and low points and dark times that we should talk about it doesn't mean that that um as a whole i'm not grateful and still stoked to be a part of it most of the time um yeah. But I th- I think it's bad to pretend everything's roses and and people say toxic positivity like that. I I think it's not good to to filter out all the bad and just only talk about the good because then we're not uh, gonna things aren't really gonna change. Yeah, and, and, and for me personally, like I want everyone to go into whatever their job that they choose. I want them to go into it with their eyes open, knowing what they're getting into. Like if yes, you go work for Amazon totally. as a software engineer. It's going to be fucking hard because like that place is constant chaos and they're going to push you super, super, super hard. You're going to make a lot of money Mm -hmm. and you're going to have a lot of impact, but it is going to like, it's not going to be fucking easy. And I'm not saying anyone should or shouldn't take that job. It's just like, that's what the job is. And if someone wants to be a musician, you know, the tours, you should understand what the reality of that is because I think there's a lot of people... Yeah. yeah, like I, I used to, um, I worked on this magazine years ago, this like DVD magazine. We did a lot of like action sports and music stuff. We did mm-hmm. like videos with like Quicksilver and Element and like Rockstar Games and blah, blah, Damn. blah. That's awesome. And <laughs> it, well, yeah, but it's one of these things where, you know, I've had many of these experiences in my life where I, I, I got the thing I wanted or got very close to it and then realized like, oh, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. And so like that job was like, it was cool when I describe it to you like that, but I got paid maybe 15 or $20,000 a year for that. Um, and right. I worked my fucking balls off for it. Right. And the people in action sports are unbearable. Right. Just total dicks. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this fucking sucks. I mean, obviously it could be worse. Like it's not working in a coal mine or whatever. Yep. But like it was, I did not enjoy it at all. And then so, there's been a lot of other jobs that I had that I thought were going to be shitty and actually turned out to be really cool. So, um, well, thank you for, for that 
because I feel like this is sort of a, a mock-up example going on right now where, okay, you told me about this on the surface really sick job that you had that a lot of people, you know, on paper would kill to, to have the opportunity. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, that's so cool. You go, but, you know, th- these reasons that made it really hard and unbearable and to the point where a lot of times you weren't enjoying it, um, you know, that that changed things for you when yeah. you're on the inside and, and on the outside. I'm like, dude, you should just you should just be grateful. Stop. Stop complaining. You know, yeah, and anyone I, and would kill grateful. to be in your position. Yeah. And right. And that while that is true, of course, I we still are. Aren't we entitled to to trying uh, for better, for wanting more and, and for um, sure. expressing the things that aren't OK in what we're doing? It, it doesn't mean that. You know, looking at you, sure. oh, you're you're just ungrateful and and you should shut up about it, which is probably 40 percent of the the feedback I got <laughs> yeah. from from people who aren't in this. And the, the that's other the thing you got to be is, in it to understand it. Sorry, yeah. Go ahead, Finn. I'm, I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> well, the, the other part of this is like I want people listening to this to also realize that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are probably listening to this and are like. Yeah, but that's all I've ever wanted is to be in a band and I have this nine to five job and it sucks and I hate my life. And yeah. And then you look, you see someone like me who's like in this doing it, traveling the world, bitching about it. Like, well, I I can totally understand why they would. My my point to those people is like, well, actually, maybe your life isn't isn't doesn't suck. You know, like, okay. you know, there is not a fucking thing wrong with having a nine to five job. That's a really good point, too. Yeah. I don't like for like, I enjoy what I do, but like, I don't do this because like I wanted to necessarily, I always just wanted a stable nine to five corporate job that like paid well and, you know, didn't like stress me out too much, but I I couldn't get those jobs because just for whatever reason, I was not good enough at like convincing them that, you know, (laughs) they didn't want me, you know? And I'm yeah. like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to do things the hard way. And it is the fucking hard way. Yeah. And, and it's, not... the, it's the unpredictable way, the, the yeah. less secure way. And, and that's scary. I, I think obviously this always rings true that the grass is greener on the other side in a lot of ways, yeah. no matter what you're doing. I, I think you and I, we pine for job security and stability and, and a sanctuary where we know you know, our routine's not going to be messed with each day. Totally. Like if I could have some boring ass job, like doing accounts receivable, you know, for Amazon in a job where nobody ever even knew that I existed and just be able to count on stability there and know that I could have that job. Like my, my dad, my mom and dad both worked for the department of corrections and you know, you work for the state. It's like, you're not going to get paid a ton, but you're also, you know, job stability is guaranteed basically. Mm-hmm especially working at a prison, you know, it's not a lot of competition for that job. Um, <laughs> and uh, great retirement benefits and stuff. They're good. And like, uh, the, like there's not a fucking, so listening for anybody listening to this, I want you to know, like there is not a single fucking thing wrong with choosing that path. Like, it's not like you're a loser if you didn't end up, you know, or, or that your life sucks because you didn't end up playing music for a living or, you know, doing something creative or whatever. There's a lot to be said for stability. Yeah. But FOMO is a powerful thing. And it sure is. When when people are feel like they're missing out on an experience that they always really wanted, then you see someone who is in that position that and you're uh, like, fuck you, Andy. And I'm complaining about it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and this is what I didn't really think about it when I hit that send tweet. <laughs> um, like I said, it was definitely a low moment for me. I was feeling weak and and uh, I've been a lot better about this, but I still have these moments where I'm like, God, I got to get my feelings out there. I got to vent. I got to express it. Twitter. Here we go. Um, I will say for me, um, what I have learned is that like expressing negative feelings in my content. Pretty much 100 percent of the time, a bad idea. Right. Unless it's lyrics, then then uh, it, you can get away with it. But yeah, in earnest, sure. in earnest. Absolutely. Um, but I'm I'm also I'm struggling with. Bad idea, good idea sort of thing, because there are I'm very, very happy and and validated and rejuvenated by 
the camaraderie and the solidarity that I've experienced from other musicians who have lived this life. A lot of really awesome, cool people have reached out to me from that tweet telling me that they get it and they understand it and giving me perspective. Let's focus on this and bettering this um, and in order to make a better world for our, for our future. And, and that gives me hope. And I'm, I'm really glad that I, that I was able to say this um, and get a lot of good feedback from people who have lived the life. So I do think overall, you know, I'm happy with my decision to talk about it. Um, but then obviously there's the backlash from the people that, like we're talking about, have have different jobs and and think about what a privilege it is to be in my yeah. position. And, which and, it and is. I think that's fair for them to be like, fuck you, Andy, like shut up and <laughs> shut up and sing. Like, I think that's yeah, a fair reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think it is, too, um, because how could they possibly know where I'm coming from without yeah. living that life and just seeing my limited character tweet? Um, but maybe if if we could meet each other in the middle and yeah. I because I did gain a lot of healthy perspective from that side too. Um I shouldn't uh say all I feel is sh- ashamed and beaten down and absolutely whatever because that isn't all I feel. Right. Um there are moments where it is it feels insurmountable and overwhelming. Um but because of the the wonderful people that still occupy this scene it's not all bad. <laughs> Yeah, there's well, singers are emotional and, people. Yeah, it's very true. Um, and again, you know, when I spend so much of my life looking up to and being inspired by um, a lot of my heroes, and then I feel like that's a piece of me. And then I find out, you know, that this piece has uh, been a disgraced pervert, or whatever. <laughs> you know, you look at like Lost Prophets or, or Marilyn Manson or etc cetera, sure, etc cetera. Yeah. um it stings very badly and uh it's not the only reason why i'm in in, in this industry to to dream of that lifestyle and and to want to be where where my heroes were but it, it is a, a big part of it so i'll say something positive about the disgraced perverts part <laughs> oh, which is oh the, where is this going going then at least people in rock give a shit which is not true like People like rappers are such fucking awful people like (laughs) across the board that have done so many terrible things, you know, like, so, I mean, like fucking listen to future lyrics, you know, listen to Rick Ross. I mean, all these people are like gang members and murderers and drug dealers and like, (sighs) and they're like, they're not lying because like they go, you know, like, oh, that's just lyrics. Well, no, they're going to prison for it. You know, I mean, like YNW Melly is facing the death penalty for allegedly murdering his two best friends and people in rap like the industry and fans don't give a shit yeah um, well more than not giving a rock shit care. i i almost think it's uh it's almost the other way it's like they they give a shit and that they want to see this stuff play out more because, of it yeah I mean, you, yeah, you look at like the it's drill tea, scene, it's drama. for instance, and when people are, when violence and killing has happened and it, it's pushing forward the, the it's just like a reality it. show to them. Right. And I, I don't know for sure. I can't really speak to this genre has more shitheads that don't care than this genre. Um, but yeah, accountability is, is a good thing. And, and yeah. I think because of all of this, you know, tearing down of, of, uh, the the predator culture we're going to see a reform and yeah. our next generation is gonna know this shit doesn't fly we're, we're right. versus the you know it's sad to say but the the generation that that people like me and younger uh grew up watching that was like sensationalized like banging groupies man and right, fucking right. like being a scumbag and a shithead and trashing the hotel and just being a total asshole and then that became right. normalized <laughs> and okay to the point where Celebrated. everyone it was just like yeah let's this is awesome and now time's up you know chickens are coming like, home to roost we're you realizing these, that's like, terrible and <laughs> yeah you hear the guys from these like hair metal bands who are whatever in their 50s or something now telling yeah. these stories and you're just like yeah it, like, it, it no, doesn't age no. well you know a lot i think a lot of it was like boys will be boys sort of yeah. shit 
but that's not flying in this decade. And yeah. um, it hurts. It hurts to see. It hurts really but badly. It is progress, but though. It is exactly. It, it's necessary to feel the pain of disillusionment that we're, you know, that we're feeling. But it is progress. And I'm hoping, you know, you talk a lot about how trends and genres are cyclical and and things come back and and so i'm hoping that that when we're on this next cycle um these elements will be a lot less present and then there'll there'll be, be lots of pride to be had again uh being in in this industry and doing this music and um again there is a lot of pride to be had like all the wonderful people that that sure have reached out um but that doesn't erase the the hardships and and yeah. those moments where I'm like, is it all worth it? You know, why am I doing this? Um, and luckily, uh, there's some some great reminders out there. And uh, yeah, I think the takeaway from from this situation is positive. Um, and yeah, I mean, I kind of have some new heroes now because of it. So what do you mean by that? Um just some some of the folks that that I maybe wasn't fully following um that reached out to say hey I'm in this and 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 they're further along than me um mm-hmm. and still thriving and I've gotten really really nice texts from some just awesome people and great bands who I won't name because I don't want to like you know sure. <laughs> give anybody any reason to throw hate their way but just amazing people that uh inspire me now and and make me feel like i can look up to them and and continue on and uh, that then that's, i think that's like really great practicing gratitude is such a like important thing for all of us but yes. especially people yeah. like us who have the incredibly good fortune to do what we do for a living mm-hmm. that's and, a great lesson uh, yeah it's easy to it's you know and that's not to like that's not to discount any of the things that are hard. You know, I mean, I get hundreds and hundreds of people calling me a fucking idiot every day and multiple threads a week about me on Reddit saying all kinds of terrible things about me and sucks. Um, but at the end of the day, like ultimately, I'm just so incredibly grateful that I am able to do this for a living and that anybody on earth gives a fuck what I say about anything Yeah. enough to react <laughs> to it at all. That is absolutely true man um and what while we're on that topic uh i just i was wondering if i had to ask you something um sure how how do you deal with that stuff seeing these threads of just misunderstood misdirected hate towards you and just a lot of you know how i know it can't feel good um it sucks and, and how how do you deal with that inside uh when, when it happens when you see things that you don't want to see and and the like well it depends what they're saying um like if people are just saying i'm old and ugly and they don't like my hats you know you you can be okay with that because you're not putting your soul into your hats yeah and you are who you are right (laughs) how dare you uh yeah i can pretty much let that stuff go um there's some people that just make up lies about me like saying that i'm like a bigot and a transphobe and stuff which is just completely false and that like worries me because i don't want people to think those things about me that aren't true right like a domino but, effect of inference and and yeah exactly because like oh i heard he's a transphobe well, totally totally false like that is tough, I, have, yeah. I, I have absolutely no clue why anybody would ever say that because if you watch any of my videos i've always been like actually super supportive of trans people and a lot of people in the comments call me like you know a woke sjw or whatnot i'm like well all right. Which is it? <laughs> well, you see, you see that. Have you seen that meme? That's like you can be on the internet and say something, and then get like you'll be like the sky is blue, and then it's like what about the other colors? What about yellow? Right? It's like that's a whole other sentence. You know, <laughs> yeah, that stuff. Yeah. So I, anyway, I don't know how I can. <laughs> I don't know how I can be a bigot and an SJW at the same time. Right. Um, right. But uh, that that bothers me just because like you know people don't do research. They just see a reddit thread that this person is a bigot and they might believe it Mm -hmm. and i don't want people to think that about me so that 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 Mm -hmm. bothers me just because you know i mean it's like my 
I, like I use my real name. Like people know who I am and I don't mm -hmm. want people to think that about me because it's not true. Yeah. Um, most of it though, is just people like, you know, the metal people just arguing with every little thing I say. And to be honest, like that gets really draining to me is just feeling like everything I say just gets debated to death and right. nitpicked. And it's just very like, under Jesus scrutiny. Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, man. Can you just let me exist and like not worry about whether I like the second Papa Roach album or not? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the is thing. I, I think if you're just a person that isn't a public figure or isn't putting themselves out there, you don't get attacked for stuff like that. You don't right. get placed under such scrutiny. But I think there's just like a certain amount of assumed privilege that we have. Yes, where it's it true. feels like it's people are, are totally OK with just unloading an onslaught of assumptions and verbal abuse and negativity because Oh, he ain't, he's not going to see it. He's, he's, you know, yeah, well, he's, he's I, I a will big, see big it. shot, but, you know, but, but, and, but and I, he's not I, human. And, you know, we still but, are. But I agree see. with that. They like we put ourselves out in the arena. You know, when you put out a video or when I put out a video or you put out a song, people are allowed to say that it sucks. Yeah. And they're allowed to say that yeah. you're talentless and that I'm an idiot, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I would prefer that they don't. Right. And I think for like their their own mental health like i don't think it's a good like i don't think it's good for them to put that energy out into the but it's world. part of the territory and and yeah we're they're taking allowed a to risk say that. doing that they're allowed to say that you yeah. know and i'm not i'm never gonna like i don't know it sounds weird to say it, but i'm never gonna tell people to stop because that's just it's just part of the it's part of you the job, are entitled you know? to your opinion about whatever about art. me yeah yeah, yeah. or right or content. exactly whatever you want to call it that, that people are putting out there. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I, I really just try to practice gratitude. That's the, that's how I deal with it more than anything else is sometimes it does get to me. Um, I mean, it gets to me a lot. Um, but I try to just like take, like literally take a deep breath and like, so like uh, there's a physical part of it as I try to take a deep breath and relax the tension in my shoulders and face. Because like, if you actually pay attention, lots of times you're carrying a lot more, tension in your body than you realize <laughs> bro tell me about it i i literally i don't know how to relax so i'm always yeah always me too tense. and like if you realize yeah. it if you actually like take a deep breath and like when you when you breathe out like consciously relax your body you'll be like oh shit i didn't realize how much how tension much yeah how carrying. much i was carrying right and you will feel you will feel mentally better as soon as you let out that physical tension so i i do that and then mm -hmm. i just remind myself that I am so fucking fortunate to be in this position. And, you know, I mean, for example, I've talked about this a million times. Like my wife's family are like refugees from Vietnam. Like her dad, you know, her, her parents were both in like a communist prison camp in Vietnam and they broke out and risked their lives to, you know, basically steal a ship and, you know, pilot oh, wow. it to the Philippines and got attacked by pirates and almost died and oh, blah, blah, holy, blah. Holy crap. You know. And and her dad also fought in the jungle in Vietnam from when he was 17 to 25 for like, you know, like eight fucking years fought in the jungle. You know, it's like, man, if my father-in-law can do all that, I can deal with some people on Reddit fucking, you know, calling me names. Yeah. And and I think that's a really, really good lesson, too. Uh, and I appreciate you answering my question. Um, practicing gratitude. That's something that I want to take with me from this conversation. And and this situation in general. Um, like literally the fact that we have running water is something to be grateful for. Like when the power goes yeah. out for like two hours, how much does that suck? <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> Definitely. You know, and, and yeah. just think about how grateful you are when the power comes back on. Right. I just try to, I, I try, I'm not, and I do not do this successfully, but I try to stay in that space. Or like if you have a health scare and you go to the doctor and you're like, no, uh, everything's fine. Just take these antibiotics. And I'm like, oh, thank fucking God. I don't have cancer. Like I, I try to stay in that space. I, I do not successfully do it, but that's where I try to stay. Sure. Uh, I think aiming for it and, and trying is, is the best you can do. There's really no such thing as being in a constant state of happiness. Right. You know, to be happy is to be frequent with moments of, of happiness and being grateful. Yep. Um, and I and and that's the, the thing is that I, it's still it's still worth it, no matter the the painful opinions that people may have about you and, and the feelings that they, may, they have. And, and aside from that, the difficulty of the industry, 
the amount of of shit that we take and get getting beat down and just run through the the reams. I mean, it's like, it's a hard way to the top if you want to rock and roll like like <laughs> that's they, right. You know, like ACDC said in those lyrics. Um, I've always sort of uh look looked at that as as a guide. Um, but it, it is still definitely worth it and um we're both happy to be out there a- able to i mean think of how many really positive amazing stuff where people have i know you've you've seen and i know if you gotten where they say your your content or your art has helped me so much it, it is tons yeah it has had a positive impact on my life and helped give me some sort of uh solace during tough times um and truthfully, I've seen a lot more of that than the bad stuff. Of course. But, but I think as humans, our brains tend to latch on to, uh, you know, one thorn in uh, a thousand roses. It's it's hard yep. to. I don't know. I don't know why we do it, but we do. do it's it. called. We, yeah, there, it's a thing in psychology called negativity bias. That's like very well documented. Okay. And if you think about it, it makes sense evolutionarily because it's more important for you to remember you know, where the saber toothed tiger lives mm-hmm, than how mm-hmm. pretty the sunset was last night. Oh man. I was like, I don't know why we do that. You just told me why we yeah, do that. that like, that's it's why. evolutionary. It's for survival. I I get that. Um but now <laughs> honestly we've evolved so much where there's no more saber toothed tigers and to yeah. survive we actually need to try to train ourselves to do the opposite. Exactly. A lot of our like evolution, a lot of our behavior and like the way our brain works and stuff is actually maladapted to, you know, a world in which like resource scarcity and stuff is no longer a thing. Dude, but I love talking to you. <laughs> this is our, yeah. Our our <laughs> firmware is uh, needs an update. It is I, a uh, firmware one other th- thing. Yeah, right, it totally is. Unfortunately, yeah, go, go I, just, I keep waiting for the update. <laughs> Um, we have there's, to collectively there's, update our firmware together. Yeah. <laughs> there's one thing I wanted to mention, which is, um, you know, knowing that, you know, you don't love touring all the time and stuff. I know it's like, it's hard for you. Um, mm-hmm. Me doing Twitch just two nights a week um, has really made me have a whole new level of respect for touring musicians, especially singers, because, you know, you are the focal point of the band and um, you can't, I mean, you, of course, everyone has their good and bad nights and stuff, mm-hmm. but like, no matter what's going on in the day, no matter how shitty you feel or a bad phone call that you had or whatever, you got to put all that aside and give people a good show because they don't know or care about any of that. Mm-hmm. And it's hard for me to do that on Twitch, even just twice a week, let alone every single night for like six or eight weeks. So respect for that. Thank you. And hey, the respect is, is reciprocated, man. I mean, Twitch two nights a week that's tough for me as well. Like when I'm home, that's pretty much what I strive to do is, is the two, uh, two nights a week on Twitch and yeah, setting aside your personal stuff and putting on that, that face and being the, the one that your fans have grown to love you for no matter what the show must go on. That yep. I, I appreciate that man. And, um, performing gives me validation and joy and understanding that is so profound. I I couldn't possibly describe it. And it, it is the high that I chase in life. It is is the number one, my number one, uh, favorite thing is to perform. Um, and I love it more than anything, but touring and everything that comes with it, the traveling, uh, and, and the exhaustion and, and the giving up of basic amenities. I mean, it becomes inhumane a lot of times. I don't love that. So, it's like I love to perform, but the shit yeah. that you must go through in the other order 23 to get and a half hours a day. Yeah, yeah, so and, and that's the thing is that you 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 wake up early and you load, you grind, and then you wait around, and maybe you got you got to do these meet and greets where you still have to perform in a way yep. and put on a face, and then you've got to well, I've got to like help sell merch, and we got to help out with merch, and 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 be on roadies, and um, not a lot going on this big serotonin spike when you perform and then you're back down to the low, the inertia is still carrying and you've just got noise and songs and your ears are ringing and you're trying to go to sleep and uh, off to the next one, you know, day after day, insides of venue bathrooms are all you're really seeing because there's no time for touristy shit. Um, That is a, a literal struggle bus. That it's a hard way to the top. If you want to rock and roll, Andy, (laughs) that's right, man. Um, 
but I'm I'm gonna keep climbing and uh, keep trudging through. And um, hey, man, people like you who make me feel valid in what I'm doing, you help me keep going, and we're in this together, man. So yeah, thank you for le- for letting me uh, talk about this and um, just even for seeing the the spirit and the validity and the good nature in my tweet means the world man so well i appreciate appreciate your time and uh i will let you go and we'll catch you next time you come through town all right i hope we can do this again soon man absolutely i'll see you